Home run switches with over 20 million click lifespan, and the sensor is a Pixar peak. What the? Oh man! Oh, when's the last time I saved? Maybe an hour ago. Oh, all that work gone. Has that ever happened to you? Oh man, don't remind me. <laughs> yeah, we had that happen once during our project at the old place, losing over an hour of work. And it's happened here uh, at the new studio once as well, but luckily not when we were working. You know, they do have solutions for that. Yeah, you're right. So we picked up the CyberPower 1000 VA 600 watt uninterruptible power supply or UPS unit online. And we also reached out to CyberPower to see what else they had to offer. So they sent over both a smaller 850 VA 510 watt model as well as a larger uh, 1,500 VA, 1,000 watt model. I lifted that earlier, it's so heavy. Yeah, uh, heavier usually means the battery backup unit has a higher capacity. And if you decide on one of these for your backup solutions and buy through our affiliate links down below, it does help us out a bit here, so thank you for your support. Just a reminder, if you want to keep up with our releases and occasional contests, you should follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. At Techspin, we always bring you honest testing and opinions about new tech, so you can make informed decisions about new gear. So today we'll show you how to pick the UPS that's right for you, and check out these three models from CyberPower. And there's also chapter links if you want to skip ahead to a section you're looking for. Sounds good, let's get to it. Are you looking for battery backup? And what kind of features are you looking for in a UPS? Please leave your thoughts in the comments. First, let's start off with a quick tips section. To ensure the battery's maximum charge capacity, it's recommended that you charge the battery for at least eight hours. Some manufacturers and higher capacity models may require a different amount. Second, check the wiring fault light. If it's on, you need to check your outlet to make sure it's correctly wired and grounded. The surge protection features won't work if it's not properly wired and grounded, and you won't be covered by any connected equipment guarantee. Get a wiring technician to fix it. Third, don't connect power strips or extensions into either the battery plus surge or just surge protected UPS outlets, as it increases the risk of electrical fire. You also can't use it for aquariums or on any transportation as condensation or vibration can cause a short. Number four, don't plug a laser printer, paper shredder, copier, space heater, vacuum cleaner, pump compressor, or power hungry devices like hair dryers into the battery and surge protected outlets. We'd recommend getting a separate surge protector power strip if you're safeguarding heavy demand devices. And finally, to maximize battery runtime during a brownout or blackout, only battery backup your absolutely essential equipment. TLDR, after testing and research on models and performance for price, you should pick a UPS with an LCD screen, 500 to 600 watts minimum, and USB connectivity. A two minute summary. For a network, at minimum, get a 250 to 300 watt backup with no LCD, mm, that can go for 50 bucks US and lasts about an hour and 20 minutes. Around 500 watts with LCD for uh, 100 US, uh, 80 on sale, the, your network will stay up to just under three hours. These are standby models, by the way, so a line interactive mini tower, like a 600 watt, 420 bucks, should actually get you past the three and a half hour mark. For a PC, a monitor being minimally used at the 600 watt level gets around 30 minutes for 120 USD, and 1000 watts lasts 49 minutes for 210 USD, with pure sine wave for AV equipment. Out of our options today, the best bang for buck will be the CyberPower CP1000 AVR LCD. However, the power brick form factor with four AC adapter spots is a deal on sale for 80 bucks. For the best stamina per dollar, a 900 watt PC only UPS and 600 watt monitor and peripheral UPS combo for just $270 should last you just over an hour with minimal usage. Of course, gaming with the latest AAA titles, rendering, and the age of the battery will factor into cutting down that time. A UPS or uninterruptible power supply kicks on if the power goes out powering whatever is connected to the battery side. UPSs are rated by VA and watts, and watts equals volts times amps, often referred to as VA or volt amps. Bigger wattage batteries give longer run times, and newer UPSs provide surge protection too. You can keep your network online if it's essential, uh, keep a PS4 or switch and TV on during a power failure, or have your main PC a monitor on battery backup so that you can save and power down safely. So there's two areas that we'll be looking at. One is keeping your network up, and the other is preventing computers or even game consoles from abruptly turning off. And if you're a PS4 owner, you know about that two to three minute wait while your console becomes operational again. And uh, protection from data loss is of course important too. If your PC suddenly loses power, you can get corrupted documents or a really badly uh, timed Windows update 
could leave you having to reinstall Windows again. At minimum, it saves you time recreating a lost work or fixing drive issues, even if your hard drive, SSD, or hardware survives intact. No matter where you live, you'll get voltage surges, sags, and brownouts depending on the demands of the power network around you, even in your own home, from turning on an old fridge or AC unit, which can really put a spike in the voltage. They also help mitigate spikes from lightning strikes, which is the jewel rating on surge protectors. And lightning is very common in Taipei from the tropical weather, so having extra protection for our data is the main reason we bought one. So how does the UPS work? Installed between a properly wired grounded socket and your devices, the UPS battery charges and remains topped off, and during a brownout or blackout, the battery kicks in, delivering power to all battery side connected devices until the battery is exhausted. UPSs usually offer half their sockets as battery and surge protected, and the other half just being surge protected. USB connectivity can tell your computer the remaining battery time and trigger a shutdown through software. There's two types of UPS, standby and line interactive. Both can switch over in the case of power failure in a few milliseconds. Standby units during surge, sag, or brownout conditions, they switch fully over to battery draw. Line interactive models have AVR or automatic voltage regulation that cleans incoming current without switching over to battery. So they last a lot longer due to less wear on the battery. We recommend line interactive units. As AC wall power reverses smoothly 60 times per second, UPSs must produce a smooth sine wave to mimic this from the DC power battery. If the AC sine wave is rough, some computer power supplies will whine or even be damaged by the rough current. Importantly, if you're working with AV equipment, you want pure sine wave or simulated sine wave, as power irregularities often introduce noise to sensitive audio gear. Factoring into operational costs, you'll pay a tiny bit more in electricity monthly for the backup protection, and usually, three to six years down the road, need to replace batteries as they start to lose charge, which your UPS will beep or light an LED to tell you it's time. Let's talk about the three models we have today. First is the CyberPower EC850 LCD, a standby type with simulated sine wave and surge protection. This model price is just under 100 bucks US, on sale sometimes for 80 bucks on Amazon, and 110 Canadian. But in the UK, there's nothing yet of this form factor and capacity at this time. Key features are the 850VA 510 watt capacity, LCD screen, 12 surge protected outlets, and six of those are battery backup along with USB connectivity and auto shutdown software. A circuit breaker reset button, 100,000 connected equipment guarantee when connected properly. And the LCD displays current and load level, battery level, output voltage, overload, normal mode, runtime, input voltage, battery in use, and silent mode, with a typical transfer time of four milliseconds. CyberPower's Ecologic series has an interesting function. When your PC is off or sleeping, it can cut power to three surge protect only outlets on this model to save power. Useful for turning off PC speakers, something I always forget to do. This is also user configurable in software if you don't need this functionality, working with Power Panel Personal, a free download, and we'll have a look at this software later. The CyberPower EC850 LCD has a surge rating of 526 joules. Battery recharge time is eight hours from total discharge and battery life is quoted from three to six years. The CyberPower EC850 LCD has a three-year product warranty and audible alarms for battery mode, low battery, and overload conditions. This socket layout allows for four larger AC adapters to be plugged in without interfering with other sockets. Some really good planning there. It also comes with a USB cable to connect to the PC and the LCD is blue backlit with white segments, readable from the left to the right and above very nicely. One thing you might notice is that Taiwan's voltage is actually 110 volts at 60 Hertz. 99% of electronics have input tolerance at the 120 volt mark, so 10 volts below in this case isn't an issue. The UPS delivers 120 volts when running and no problems to equipment in Taiwan, everything working fine. Next up is the CyberPower CP1000 AVR LCD, a line interactive unit with simulated side wave and surge protection and part of CyberPower's intelligent LCD lineup. It prices at 120 USD, 191 Canadian, and 3200 NT in Taiwan, although I saw it for sale at 2700, which is a great deal if you live here. This unit is a 1000 VA 600 watt capacity with a sharp clear black LCD screen and it's the brightest of the three LCD screens we're looking at with white segments and a white LED power button. 
with nine surge protected outlets, five of those battery backup, and it has coax and gigabit network RJ45 protection in and out with USB and serial port connectivity. With $350,000 connected equipment guarantee, the LCD shows all the previous items like input, output, voltage, current, load, and battery levels, runtime, overload, and silent, again, with a typical transfer time of four milliseconds. Additional features of the intelligent LCD is displaying input and output hertz, output kilowatts, volt amps and amps, along with kilowatts and volt amps percentages. Power Panel Personal is the software that interfaces with this model. This cyber power unit has a surge rating of 1080 joules, double the previous model. Battery recharge time is typically eight hours from empty. Battery life isn't listed, but should range also around the three to six year mark. There's audible alarms for battery mode, low battery, overload, and fault conditions. And there's a user replaceable battery for a list price of 40 bucks when you eventually need to replace it. The socket layout is packed together. So if you want to use AC adapters, you could always grab a UL listed three prong AC power extension core 10 pack for about 17 bucks off of Amazon. It comes with a USB cable to connect to the PC and the LCD has much better legibility due to the contrast of white segments showing on pure black and for visibility is readable left to right and above very well. Our biggest unit today is the CyberPower CP1500 PFC LCD. A line interactive unit with pure sine wave and surge protection is part of CyberPower's PFC sine wave line for high end audio and visual equipment. It prices around 210 USD, 299 Canadian, and 4,500 NT in Taiwan. This unit is a 1500 VA, 1000 watt capacity with a color segment LCD screen over black and a white LED power button. With 12 surge protected outlets, six of those battery backup, one outlet on each side spaced away for AC adapters. It has a gigabit network RJ45 protection with USB and serial port connectivity. One upgrade is the Remote Management SNMP Expansion Port. Simple Network Management Protocol is a way for different devices running different software on a network all to communicate. CyberPower's RM Card 205 allows remote management through tons of protocols. SNMP is entering the office and server side tech side of things, so real time monitoring and event notification starts around $230 for an expansion card. I see an ARM chip in the photo, so it's basically a microcomputer. Also, coming with a $500,000 equipment guarantee, the color LCD panel tilts four notches, up to 22 degrees for easy viewing with almost the same screen info as the AVR1000, dropping input hertz and output amps, but adding event number to tell you if there's any important issues with the typical four millisecond power transfer time. Software is handled by the upgraded power panel business package. Another cool addition is you can charge your phones or tablets from battery power, connecting with a USB type A or C. They are shared 3.1 amp charge ports. This CyberPower CP1500 PFC LCD has a surge rating of 1,445 joules up from the previous model. There's audible alarms for battery mode, low battery, overload and fault conditions, and battery recharge time is listed at eight hours from empty with a three year product warranty in the USA. With user replaceable batteries, this unit takes two for a list price of 100 bucks for that eventuality. It comes with a USB cable to connect to PC and the LCD light is a little bit dimmer but has no light bleed and great legibility due to the adjustable screen angle. It's very readable from left to right and above as well. The notches as you adjust the screen are a bit rough, built more for function, but the mechanism does not seem flimsy. That being said, there is a big warning on top not to use the front LCD as a handle to lift up the UPS. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. First, for keeping your network up, consider your modem, Wi-Fi router, and any Ethernet switches or smart home hub or voiceover IP boxes if you need them on, and especially network attached storage. Those should really get battery backup. How many large AC adapters do you need to plug in? If your setup is just a modem router combo or all devices are close together, you may decide extended parts of your network aren't really essential if you lose power. For a UPS protected modem router setup that'll keep your internal network online, maybe also keeping internet connected if the closest hop is still getting power uh, outside the network, outside of your house there. If not, at least you can still access network attached media in your home, as long as it's battery backed up. Remembering that watts equals volts times amps, add up all the devices you need to plug in, and then using an online calculator, you can determine the total runtime you can expect to get for a certain battery size. 
We have a Nokia fiber modem at 12 volts, 1.5 amps, so that's uh, 18 watts. A D-Link DIR882 gigabit router at 12 volts times 2.5 amps, so up to 30 watts. And a D-Link DGS108 gigabit switch with a 5 volt 1 amp draw, so 5 watts. A theoretical 53 watts max, but real draw is far less. At attaching an ammeter, we measured current draw at just 12.6 watts. Our test with the CyberPower EC850 LCD gives us a runtime of 2 hours 49 minutes, which was pretty amazing. Next, we waited for the CP1000 AVR LCD to recharge for 8 hours from a concurrent PC test, and we saw 3 hours 51 minutes of runtime. Next, we'll cover the most common use case, a UPS setup for a slightly power-hungry PC setup. The main idea is to be able to finish whatever we're doing and shut down properly. While most of our extra devices for our main editing workstation are plugged into the surge protected side, in order to maximize runtime on the UPS, we're choosing only the main 32-inch 1440p screen, the i9-9900K PC with a 2070 Super, and computer speakers because, hey, I might be working on audio at the time. We also have that Seagate external 8TB backup drive we reviewed earlier this quarter, a uh, link up here if you want to check that review. It's always off, however, it is plugged into battery backup because having a hard drive lose power when doing data transfer is a sure way to get data corruption. Whatever your setup, you should choose the essentials only. Your PC, your main screen so you can see what you're doing, and any essential connected drive so that you can save your work or finish your stream or render before the backup is exhausted. This particular setup, measured by ammeter, is pulling an average of 120 watts while running. So after 8 hours minimum charge time, we waited 5 minutes until the computer was on idle and ran Netflix until the USB connection triggered auto shutdown. The CyberPower EC850 LCD was up first, giving us a runtime of 17 minutes, 24 seconds before auto shutdown occurred. The battery had the closest remaining time left with just 1 minute. Next up, our CP1000 AVR LCD powered through to the 30 minute, 27 second mark before shutdown was initiated, roughly 5 minutes left on the battery. And finally, CyberPower's CP1500 PFC LCD went for the marathon mark with 49 minutes, 1 second before auto shutdown was triggered. This happened with still about 9 minutes of power available. After a full 8 hour recharge, we tried a stamina test running the PC only off the 1500 VA and the monitor and speakers off the 1000 VA. And we reached a very impressive one hour, 17 minutes and 24 seconds before shutdown was triggered on the PC with the 1500 VA still at 10% reserve. Considering the runtime we got and looking at CyberPower's lineup, if you only need an hour for network backup, we might look at the CyberPower EC450G, which is a standby type 450 VA 260 watt model at about half capacity, rounding down. You should get around an hour and 20 minutes for uptime for about 45 US dollars. However, this is the entry level option without an LCD screen, and that screen proves to be pretty useful, even more so with that sale price of 80 bucks. If you want Line Interactive for network backup, the AVRG750 LCD is a good pick for about the same original price at 105 bucks and 60 watts less at 450 watts, and should give you about 2 hours 10 minutes for a similar setup. I'm really amazed to see half an hour from the CyberPower CP1000 AVR LCD and 49 minutes from the CP1500 PFC LCD. If you don't need the pure sine wave, at 155 US dollars on Amazon, there's the CyberPower CP1500 AVR LCD. It's a 1500 VA with 100 watts less, and it should give you about 44 minutes for the setup. From the 1500 VA mark, the price steeply increases. The next cheapest larger rack mount 2000 VA 1320 watt model is 450 bucks, only 320 watts more for a $240 increase. If you must have added runtime, consider using the 1500 VA only for PC battery backup and grab a 1000 VA for 120 bucks to back up a monitor and connected hard drives, saving 330 bucks. In summary, picking up a 1500 and 1000 VA line interactive simulated sine wave UPSs, you may be able to run a PC setup over an hour doing minimal tasks for just $270. We'll quickly touch on CyberPower software Power Panel Personal. First section, Home, you see Status, Summary, and Event Logs. Section 2, Energy Reporting, where you can see Consumption, and in the Settings tab, set the Country and Update Cost, and click Apply at the bottom. Third is Settings, where you can Schedule, 
set notifications, modify runtime behavior, voltage intervention, perform a self-test, and advanced for sensitivity and shutdown type. Finally, Info gives you hardware and firmware and support links. For a PowerBrick standby type UPS, the CyberPower EC850 LCD simulated sine wave has 510 watt capacity for 100 bucks, sometimes even as low as 80. Its LCD displays enough info, connects with USB, and it's really well suited as a stamina network battery backup, keeping ours running for almost three hours. Still our favorite of the bunch is the Line Interactive CyberPower CP1000 AVR LCD. The 600 watt mini tower is plenty to finish whatever task you're doing and shut down safely. The bright white segment LCD looks great, has lots of info. For 120 bucks and everything it offers is definitely our top pick. If you decide you need battery backup and grab one of these through our affiliate links below, it does support us here with no extra cost to you. The Line Interactive Pure Sine Wave CyberPower CP1500 PFC LCD ran our PC for 49 minutes before triggering the auto shutdown, which was astounding. The color segment LCD was slightly dimmer than the 1000 VA, but we did like the angle adjustment. The USB type A and C shared 3.1 amp ports can charge tablets and does fast charge phones on battery. A very nice addition. As for things to be improved, the PowerBrick type EC850 LCD isn't user serviceable for battery replacement, our only nitpick about the unit. Next, the CP1000 AVR's LCD's white power LED did start flickering and went out on us after about five months or so, but CyberPower did fix that with a unit swap. Uh, nothing else there, we've been very happy with the unit overall. As for the CP1500 PFC LCD, the only thing we'd improve is the angled screen mechanism, which feels a bit rough, though it stays where you adjust it. It's a small thing as you'll likely set it and forget it, and the stamina was really impressive. Even though I'm very happy with the product, as a tech reviewer doing research for this buying and product guide, I found the huge amount of UPS options on CyberPower's website very confusing. The consumer focus lines of UPS alone are 8 standby, 5 Ecologic, 28 PC battery backup, 7 AVR, 15 Intelligent LCD, and 10 PFC sine wave models for a total of 73 models for the lower end for um, uh, 5 to $10 jumps. Needless to say, 73 options is too many. Older products can be retired to a legacy products page and lines should really be pared down. Keeping only non-LCD entry level models and offering say four types of compact power brick types, four types of slim mini tower with and four without pure sine wave, uh, three fatter industrial mini towers and three consumer rack mounts comes to only 18 products. Plenty of choice for consumers. CyberPower, you could simplify further by offering pure sine wave versions on mid to higher watt models and use USB charging ports as a selling point for mid to higher tier offerings. Anyways, the products we tested we found to be high quality, so with a clear offering for consumers, I think CyberPower will continue to deliver backups that people can easily decide and depend on. Thanks to CyberPower for sending over the 850 and 1500 VA models for today's episode and give us a quick follow on social media. You can find us at Techspin Review on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can be notified of new contests. As we hinted at last episode, we're working on an overclocking Intel 10 series guide with MSI right now. So we should have access to new gear for review soon. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching this far. This guide and review took several days to put together. So if you found it useful, please smash that thumbs up and tell us what you like. To see more videos, please subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified of new videos. Now we do check comments, so leave any questions or things we missed down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. We hope you enjoyed this, so we'll see you on the next. Bye for now. To not use the front LSD, not to use the front LSD as a handle to lift up the UPS. Oh, did I say LSD? Yeah, twice. What the hell? LSD. <laughs> you got something on the brain? My, my brain's like, what a LSD. <laughs>